Hello and welcome to another Force 13 Extra broadcast showing the latest Ticos update. And before we begin, I'd like to point out that this is going to be the final Ticos update on the Force 13 Extra platform. Um, all future Ticos updates will be arriving on my personal YouTube channel starting tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got something down there. Um, and you can find that by searching my name, Nathan Foy, on YouTube. And that's where future updates will live because Ticos is finally making its, um, completing its departure from the Force 13 network. But tonight, um, first of all, I updated it this morning at 12 p.m. UTC, which is a good 10 and a half hours ago now, um, to reflect the current situation. Um, the system in the Southwest Indian Ocean was on the verge of developing, and I had taken off the Atlantic and the East Pack system. So, let's see what we've got in store this evening on the latest 18Z GFS model runs. Let's move things around. Let's have a look. So here's the Atlantic. There you can see it again. It lost model support earlier today. Um, and it's got a little bit back, but not enough for me to consider it for re-entry to, uh, to our code. That's what the infrared simulation is showing. And on that evidence, it, it still wouldn't surprise me if NHC tagged that. Um, but from my point of view, I think it's over. The Eastern Pacific, you won't see that Central Pacific system here. That's a little bit later on, but nothing else expected. In the Central Pacific, You've got Thingy Majig there. <laughs> uh, that's on its way out. Gone. The Western Pacific then. We're still looking at that low pressure system, a weak low that moves over the Philippines there, but nothing that we can mark, so that's a nothing. Uh, the Indian Ocean. Obviously, we have our current system. There it is. GFS depicts it at 992, and I. I think that's quite possible indeed. Unfortunately, there hasn't been much wind data, I'm afraid. Um, so we are guessing as to how strong this thing might be. But looking at latest satellite imagery, um, hmm, I think I'm convinced that this is now a closed dominant low and an actual tropical cyclone. And we're probably going to go with 45 mile per hour winds, and I would say that is possibly conservative, and a pressure of 992, and that's a tropical storm. First one of the southwest Indian Ocean, um, and the latest first formation of a tropical storm in that basin since, get this, 1923, 99 years, it's the latest forming in that time. Although, if you think that it did become a tropical storm before the Madagascar landfall, it's only the latest forming tropical storm since 1942, still 80 years. My goodness. Um, Long-standing records there. Um, very late start to the season. Well, what's it going to do, more like it? Um, well, there is the landfall very soon, in 12 hours' time, according to that GFS run. Uh, this is still F1 because it's not been named um, and we expect that landfall fairly soon so it's going to get high points for that. Oop, could be code blue if it stays like that. Let's just check the other information. Um, that score's probably gone down a little bit. So there we go. That looks like it's going to be a code blue. We'll wait for it to confirm that at the very end when we update the demand information. Um, so let's look at the other systems that we've got there. We've been toying with the idea of that one that formed near Madagascar. Of course, GFS at one point made it a major cyclone, uh, but there's nothing left of it now, so we've got no choice but to get rid of it. That was the one uh, M1 
14 South 51 East, the last update gone. Off it goes. And then we've got the others, um, the one that was at 11 South 74 East, that's this one here, that low pressure area. Does that become anything? Is it likely to? Really, it doesn't look like it's looking pretty clear cut now. Although then again, that, that, that's what happened last time. Let's check the ensembles. How clear cut is it that it's gonna be the Eastern system that forms? So let's have a look there. Decent, 60% mm, of the ensembles there. Um, oh, I'm not sure. Um, that is interesting. Much the majority on the Eastern system, but the Western system still has a chance, so I don't think I can get rid of it. So 11 South 73 East right now. It is traceable. Um, visible there, 30 mile an hour winds, 1006, 10% chance, possibly generous. The other one, already visible, 9 south, 89 east still. Let's just get a ASCAT on that, see if they got it. Uh, just looking over here. It's always difficult to find the right area. I think they might have missed on that one. Um, they got a partial pass, the southwest area, and there is a 30 knot barb in there. I've not got the full res. Hold on, let me just get that full res. See if we can get more information. Oh, that's certainly not it. Where is it? There it is. Just trying to locate it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so... Mm, I'm not sure that's part of the system, actually. That's part of the northern side. 30 miles an hour. Sorry, 30 knots. 35 miles an hour for that system. And looks pretty fair. In fact, the GFS possibly has a bit of 40 there. Maybe. Probably not. So 35, 1002. We'll run with that. Chance is much higher. 60% at least. Possibly a low ball there. What's it going to do? Not much. Oh, actually it is. It's changed since the last run. Uh, no recurve anymore. That would be a sight to see. You can see it there. If you follow that model run. Let's just go back to the ensembles again. What are the ensembles doing for? Oh, they only go out to 102 hours at the minute. Let's check the previous run. How many have island impacts there? Oh, actually, look at that. That is a significant chunk of the ensembles having landfall impacts or storm impacts on the Mass Serene Islands. So this is actually getting pretty interesting. We're going to assume that the storm makes that close pass to Reunion at hour 204, although it's too far out for us to do anything on the numbers side. Um, but that is very interesting, if I do say so myself. And a pretty deep peak there as well at 952 millibars. So that's for N1. So that's going to be a stronger peak. And it is of interest to Mauritius at this point. And that will bump up the score just that little bit too. 18 points. That could be code blue in a couple of days if that trend continues. Looking to the Australian region there, not much at all. The Southwest Pacific. What have we got here? We were looking towards that system near Vanuatu. There it is again, forming up. It's still near the end of the run. Uh, it really starts to become traceable at the now 96 hour mark, 12 south, 167 east. Um, and within the five day period, I think we're still happy to stick with 10%. And there won't be any change in Ticos there because it, not much has changed with its track at all. Uh, southeast Pacific, dead. South Atlantic, the Scilly region. Let's have another look. 
nothing to talk about there. And the European region to finish us off. Nothing to discuss there either. There has been a new frame that just came in whilst I was on the air for the Southwest Indian Ocean system and it is looking pretty decent. So clear tropical storm by the looks of things. Let's just get the latest information um, regarding the demand factor that we that has a small amount of control over the scores. It's not going to change much at all. So there we have it. That's as of it'll end up being 11 p.m. on January 23rd. Code blue. So our final TCOS update on the extra channel ends in a code blue. Fascinating developments. Now let me find the uh, chat again. Uh, let's just see if um, there's some comments before I finish up on our final TCOS update on the Force 13 network. Um, opinions on 91W. I have really not seen much to do with that at all. Um, as I say, I, I assume it's that weak low that's moving through the Philippines. It looks like it's going to stay very weak. Um... Monke says, it's my birthday, can you please say happy birthday? Happy birthday to you, I hope it's been an excellent day for you. Um, and opinions on 96S, I don't even follow those code names anymore. I assume that is the Cyclone now, and not something else. But, I mean, I've sort of gone through all of that. Um, and whether N1 could become a significant Cyclone. And if it would hit Madagascar. Well, certainly with that trajectory, I'm not sure because at the end of that run, um, and it is still coming out this run, by the way. Let's just see if we can go back to it. Just to see what happens. I think it might be curving north just at the end. Oh, no, not fully, not fully. So it looks like it's going to hit Madagascar right in the middle there. That's if that track verified. Uh, it's a very long way out. That's 2.34 hours there. So who knows at this point. Coming up next on the Force 13 main channel is Force 13 Sundays in 15 minutes time. If you're watching live, please join us there. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, but from the Ticos department of the Force 13 network, it's time to sign off for good. And we'll be back again um, on my personal channel, which will take over Ticos for now, for the future. Um, so make sure you search that up on YouTube as well. Just search my name. But until next time, it's a good night from me, and I'll see you on the main channel.